Welcome back to the world of Weatherby. I'm Brett. Today, we're gonna make a meatloaf. Actually, two of them. We got two pounds of meat. We're gonna cut them in half, separate it, and uh, we're gonna put it on our smoker. We're gonna show you how to use some of our products in it. And we're gonna use barbecue sauce to top it off with. And it's gonna sit on the smoker for about two and a half, three hours, uh, 225. Uh, the reason I'm separating it is I'm going to take one over to my mom's house later on. And that way she has something to munch on this week. Uh, but that's about it. So we're going to get her started. You're going to have to watch me cut up a few things because I didn't prepare everything. And we'll talk about some of our products. But besides that, we're doing pretty good. We got some fresh garlic that we uh, get out of our garden every year. We grow it every fall. We plant the ground at, after the first frost. And then around June, late June, early July, we dig it up, we braid it, and we hang it on our kitchen wall. You can probably see it right over here. And this stuff is so good and so juicy. It really makes things pop around this place. As you can see, you know, just smash it and peel it. These are a little bit more difficult to peel than the ones you get from the store because they're a lot more juicier. A lot of times it sticks to your skin. It's, and you got to play with it in the water to get it off you. If you're doing a lot of them, it can get pretty hysterical. But we're just gonna chop them up. That's all we got to do. So we have our garlic, cut up. Then we got some green pepper. We used about a half a green pepper. We like green peppers. We like red peppers. We like most any type of peppers, yellow peppers. They're all good though. So we'll end up with about a cup of pepper in this meatloaf, these double meatloafs. Not too difficult. The only thing difficult in this situation would be the onion, and that's only if it's a really strong one. You can cut the pepper up big, or you can cut it, chop it up real small. It just depends how well you like it, how you like yours. Doesn't really make a bit of difference. We're gonna kinda go right there in between. back like a cup. Now for the onion. Now the secret to a good meatloaf is make sure you have enough. Okay, we don't need all that onion. That was a bigger onion than I thought it was, so we'll save it. We're going to make some guacamole later on, so that'll be good. We'll use that in our lunch this week to make our wraps. Bam! There we go. There's that. Okay. That made a mess. You can see we got all our little ingredients all, all chopped up. Didn't take but a minute. Okay, now we got a cup of breadcrumbs, just under a cup. I have a pound of ground beef and I have a pound of uh, some pork that I had left over from a couple weeks ago when uh, uh, we were making sausage and so it was just something that couldn't make it into the stuffer to get into a tube so we wrapped it up and froze it and now we're adding it to our meatloaf all right so you got your cup there of that and you know I kind of recommend before you put your all your wet ingredients in there just kind of mix that up and get that all in there 
and that way it's good and uniform. Just mix her up good. You don't want to crush it too much because then it becomes a little bit of a mess in my opinion. Okay, so now we got a cup of milk and an egg. And this cup of milk is probably a little heavy, but that's okay. Then the next thing we're going to put in there is we're going to put two tablespoons of our top shelf, or I should say, our tavern mustard. If I can get the lid off it. Sometimes it separates a little bit, but that's okay. You just stir it up a little bit. Gives you a little sweet heat here. Now the next thing is I got two tablespoons of our top shelf barbecue sauce. And that'd be in the meat. And when we get done, we're going to top and glaze. And then I'm gonna do a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I hope I said that properly. Now the next thing we got is our Southwest rub. We're gonna use Southwest today. We haven't talked about it much. Southwest I use mostly for ribs. It's good on pork. It's good on chicken. It's awesome on french fries and things like that. So that's what we're doing right there. Now this thing's gonna be a little bit on the soggy side, but that's okay. We're gonna add a little extra pepper. I use this restaurant ground pepper because I like pepper. It goes good with garlic. And we're gonna mix this up. We're gonna patty them out and we're gonna put them back on our cutting board. And hopefully it'll turn out okay and not be too soupy. And we can set it out on our smoker and get on with life. Mix it up really good. Some people like to pan this up in a tight pan. Some people bake it in a baking pan, uh, morning wire or something like that. Okay, now we're all mixed up. We could have cut back a little bit on the milk. So maybe you might want to start with a half a cup and work up to it. Now I'm going to separate it what looks good in this bowl and we're going to put it right here on this cutting board we're going to pat it down make it somewhat tight i like to square them up because they seem to cook more evenly you don't have to have gloves to do this at home i'm just doing it because it's handling things around here i don't have to stop in the middle of the video and okay, I might have got a little bit off, so we're going to snag a little bit off that one. You know, one thing good about a good meatloaf is what you can do is you can take this and you could actually freeze it just the way it is. You know, the only thing is you want to make sure that if you follow the meat out, to thaw it out in the refrigerator and not just throw it on your countertop. So there's our meatloafs. And we'll put, I think we're good. I don't think we need to put anything back on. But as you can see, it didn't take really too long to do. Uh, we're going to put this on our smoker for about three hours on 225. You could use your oven, uh, 350, 325 and probably cook it for an hour to hour and 15 minutes. If you have it in a pan, you could throw some carrots in there with it or uh, cut up some uh, potatoes and lay down next to it around it and cover the dish. And then about 20 minutes before you get ready to pull it out, take the lid off it 
and put just some of that barbecue sauce on top of it, our top shelf, and let it crust over on top of the meatloaf. And you'll really have a really good meatloaf. Um, I promise you that. You saw basically what I did. I put some pepper, I put our Southwest rub on there, I added some of our top shelf barbecue sauce and some of our tavern mustard to the mix. Uh, you know, so that's it. So we're gonna see you back at it at the smoker here shortly. And till then, thanks. Okay, we're out here on our smoker. We're getting ready to put these beet loaves on. We have the smoker set at 225. Like I said, we're going to cook it for probably two and a half to three hours. And we'll check it after two hours. And then we'll see where we need to go. And in two hours, I'll put the barbecue sauce on top of it. And then let it continue to kind of crust up around it, just like you would if you're doing it on chicken or anything of that nature. That's it. So we're going to put this on, and we'll see you in a couple hours. I don't know if this will fit in there. Probably. I ain't tried it in this smoker before. Yep, got her in there. Looking good. And like I say, that's it. And uh, we'll see you here in about two and a half hours, two to two, two to three hours, and we'll take the meatloaves off and we'll wrap one up and we'll take it over to mom and let her enjoy it this week. I'm gonna have it tonight for my supper, but the other meatloaf. I'll probably make some uh, carrots and some, uh, I might make a pot of green beans, I don't know. I think it's time to do something else. So I'll probably do some broccoli and carrots tonight to go with my meatloaf. I'm not a big potato person, so I'm not putting potatoes in there today. Uh, if there's somebody else around that I knew liked potatoes, then I would probably use potatoes. And the thing about the potatoes, when you, if you decide you want to cook this in your oven, sprinkle those potatoes around that pan that you have it on. Make sure you have a lid for it. And when you put the potatoes in, take some of that Southwest, put your some olive oil on top of those potatoes. You can do it on your carrots too. You can put carrots in around there and put the olive oil on there and then sprinkle some of that Southwest rub on there. Uh, it, it's really good on potatoes. Um, it's good on a lot of things. You just gotta try it uh, to make things happen right. So that's about it. I hope y'all have a great afternoon and we'll see you shortly. Okay, we're back, we're ready. We're ready to pull off these uh, meatloafs and uh, we're gonna put them in a tin and then we're gonna cover them with saran wrap uh, that's about it uh, about a half hour ago we put a little barbecue sauce on the top to coat it and uh, that's it so now is the cut they're pretty looking we got one for mama one for me. We take care of our mama. I think that's what we're supposed to do with mama. Last Mother's Day kind of sucked because I didn't get to spend much time with her, but I did spend time with her. And that was nice. Um, I hadn't seen her for a while and actually got to see talk to her besides through a, a window, a door, or whatever. But uh, today, we have our meatloafs, and they're done, and they look awful pretty. I'm going to take them and show them to you, try to show them to you. You can see that meatloaf, nice little meatloaf for myself. And then we have Mama's meatloaf. Mama's going to like her meatloaf. Because that's just what we do around here at the World of Weatherby. Like I say, we're just gonna put a little saran wrap over. I know you say that's not a little, but what that'll do is that'll keep that from drying out, and it'll allow the moisture to stay inside the meat, and it'll suck uh, more moisture into the meat. So there we have that one done. 
I'll probably make up some vegetables for her later before I run this stuff over to her. Remember to share our YouTube page, YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share it with your friends. Because there's a lot of other people out there that would like our products. And we help appreciate you help spreading in the word. So, share our YouTube channel at Weatherby Rubs with your friends. Share our Facebook page with your friends. If you have any comments or any suggestions, feel free to share them with us. Uh, you can either drop us a line on our YouTube channel or you can message us at Weatherby Rubs and Sauce on Facebook. What else do I want to tell you? Oh yeah, go to weatherbyrubs.com and stop in our store and see our products and we'll get them out to you as fast as possible and share them with your friends. And you never know, I'm sometimes generous with people and give them a little extra something in their box because that's just who I am. I've had a great Sunday here, been working on the deck, uh, it's kind of rainy, turned in some rain, it's a little hot, humid, but that's okay, uh, it's been a good day, and again, thank you for coming and visiting us, and until next time, we're out of here, and we're going to enjoy some good eats.